Right, well done. Um, congratulations on your movie. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just wonder if, to start off, you could tell us just a, a little bit about it, about the setup of the film, I guess. Um, essentially, I give it a year is, I would say, um, a subversion of the traditional rom-com. It's not really an anti-rom-com because, um, uh, you know, I want people to leave the cinema feeling happy and not depressed and anti-rom-com kind of uh, intimates like it's a sort of depressing experience. And it's not, it's, you know, hopefully at the end it's quite uplifting. Um, but the idea was to sort of, you know, take traditional rom-coms uh, and where they finish, pick up from that point and see what would happen to that couple who've kind of got together in a whirlwind and had that beautiful fairy tale wedding and then see the reality of their kind of married life with each other. So, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, what would happen at the end of 27 Dresses or Leap Year when the kind of uh, delightful but mismatched couple had to embark on married life. It struck me as one of those type of films that, yeah, like after, straight after maybe a film that starred Catherine Heigl or Jennifer Aniston where those characters started off hating each other and got to that point where they like each other at the end. Mm. But you think, are you going to still like each other in six months' time? Of course you're not. Like, there's yeah. no reason on earth why the kind of the gruff Irish pub landlord uh, should <laughs> get together with the dipsy New York PR girl and have a delightful life. You know, they've, you know they hated each other two weeks ago. They're going to hate each other again in about another two weeks because the, you know, the honeymoon will soon finish. You say it's not the anti-rom-com, but it felt to me like a rom-com with that kind of running through it. It's kind of both at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I've definitely tried to have my cake and eat it, certainly, because, you know, I've, I, like I, said, I want to subvert the genre and, you know, I've been... You know, I've been hurt too many times going to see those films and kind of been disappointed, you know. And you do that thing where you sort of pretend that you don't want to go and see them, but actually, oh, you know, kind of, you know, when in Rome, sounds good, might be funny, yeah. you know, it's great. And then you, you turn up and you see it and you think, oh, you know, well, it wasn't quite what I was imagining. And um, so this is a, a sort of reaction to that. Yeah, and you've got Rafe Spall and Rose Burns, your two leads. Mm -hmm. uh, to start with, they don't seem like kind of your most obvious choice for a rom-com couple. Mm -hmm. but I guess that's, that's kind of the point. Yeah, I mean, I think that is sort of the point as well. And, um, you know, I think that's, you know, not to give too much away, the, you know, the idea is that um, what initially endears you to somebody might ultimately end up absolutely frustrating, annoying, infuriating you about them. So, um, you know, and I base this on personal experience <laughs> where, you know, um, you know, being kind of sort of charming, witty, funny, having a funny turn of phrase is, is great at the beginning, but kind of only goes so far. And, you know, and, and we can all punch above our weight if we, you know, if we're sort of funny and endearing and charming to a certain extent, but that doesn't get the washing machine fixed or, you know, or, or pay the news agents bills, for example. So, and, and that's essentially what kind of happens here. I guess that's kind of what you're trying to battle with, whether the characters will get out of that hump and, or, or whether, yeah, does it, do we give it a year and then that's... Mm, that's exactly. Backwards. Yeah, and I think, you know, in a sort of wider sort of relationship point, that I'm making is that you know lots of people persevere with marriages that are palpably wrong, and actually we should just cut our losses some some of the time. And other times, yes, there's something there worth fighting for. But it's about you know it's about making that decision, and 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 sometimes it's just better to bail. I think. And you've got Anna Faris and Simon Baker in these kind of maybe other love interest roles, but certainly like the temptation outside the bunch. Yeah. I just wonder with them both being American actors, was that, did you want them to be American characters or was that kind of like a byproduct of good casting? I think it's, I think it's sort of both basically, where I think I sort of, um, I, in terms, you know, in the most basic terms to get a film made, you need a certain amount of star power in there. Um, and um, Anna Faris and Simon Baker, whilst, both being brilliant are also kind of you know a, a big stars and you need that to get a, a film made and then I thought uh, once I once I cast one of them that it would be good to you know have two of them in there as a kind of counterpoint to our you know our, our British characters and then you've got a load of people coming in and doing because some scenes almost seem like sketch like they fit in with the narrative but they seem sketch like you've got mm. some supporting characters like Stephen Merchant and Lee Driver and Jason Fleming but then also other people like 
uh, Olivia Coleman just coming in and stealing scenes. Yeah. It's a great spell to just get these comic actors who you know, I know this person's funny, I'm going to stick them in this scene. That's amazing. That yeah, I mean, it was like playing fantasy football, but with actors, you know, it was like I was the fantasy football manager, but directing a film. So, um, you know, over the last, you know, five, ten years, I've looked at people and just thought, oh my God, they're so funny, wouldn't it be amazing to work with them? And it's weird because I've worked with Sasha, and Sasha is the only person, and everybody else is a real person in Borat and Bruno. Yeah. Uh, it, it was just nice to work with actors and be able to kind of um, it, it, people people that I've admired be able to kind of bring them into the fold so uh, you know from people like Alex McQueen from the thick of it and Tim Key who's just an amazing comedian and has been in sort of Alan Partridge and won a Perrier uh, Kerry Howard who I love from him and her and Daisy Haggard who I'd watched on lots of TV things and thought wouldn't it be brilliant to work with them and you know all of them have come in and and absolutely delivered and been hilarious and it's just a real you know it's a real privilege to uh, to be able to work with them and also I just think it's nice to bring British TV talent to the big screen and hopefully give them to a wider audience that you know that they can be appreciated you know throughout the world ideally you know and was directing a feature something that you'd always kind of aspire to do or get around to do one day it's weird I always thought that you know starting off as a as a kind of young boy from Rice Lip um, I always thought that kind of directing would be uh, absolutely beyond my capabilities beyond my comprehension and that kind of weird auteur geniuses who thought differently to mere mortals were directors and then you know through writing and spending more time on film sets and meeting more directors I sort of realized there isn't necessarily a fantastic magic and mystique to it and 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 being a writer I knew what I wanted to be on screen I knew uh, how I wanted things to look because I was creating them in my head so um, uh, it would be great to have the opportunity to you know, translate that to, to screen and you know, have the chance to, to do that. So, um, so uh, it kind of, you know, it gradually evolved. And you mentioned working with Sasha and um, you know, obviously a lot of your work before has been with him. Is that a partnership that you think you'll come back to or is this, you know, is this a party of the ways now where you've both got sort of Sasha and Lame Miz, this and yeah. you've got your own film now? Yeah, Sasha will purely be doing musical theatre from now on. <laughs> um, no, I think we'll definitely come back and work with each other. You know, we've worked with each other since we were 15, uh, for 15 years and known each other since we were 11. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely work with each other and I think, you know, we bring the best out of one another. And, you know, I've learned a, an amazing amount from Sasha as the kind of the most um, kind of intrepid and, you know... Uh, kind of uh, the greatest sort of connoisseur of comedy that you could you know, imagine. He's very scientific about it and he's really taught me a lot and um, you know, I'll definitely come back and work with him, I think. Were you tempted to ask him to come here in this? I sort of wanted to do something that was, you know, kind of separate from Sasha to kind of, you know, cut the umbilical cord slightly and just do something, um, do something off my own bat. So, um, uh, so whilst it would have been great to have him and he would have been brilliant, I just thought maybe it might be nice to do something without him for once. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the Thank film. you very much. Uh, thanks a lot for speaking to us. Oh, brilliant. No, no, pleasure. An absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much.